Hello. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me, guys? Great. <clears throat> so, can you see my screen? Oh, great. Thank you. Okay, guys, uh, let's start. Today we will talk about the um, networking and subnetting fundamentals. It will be a um, networking wo workshop. My name is Emil Garipov and... Uh, oh, thank you. Uh, my name is Emil Garipov and uh, let's start. So, let's uh, discuss about the uh, classful subnetting. What is this? Uh, classful subnetting is consist of the classes as you can guess uh, and you can see uh, here in the table the class names a b c and um, each class uh, represent represented by uh, one uh, the first bit and for example the range of the uh, class a class is the 0, .0, .0, .0 and till um, uh, 128, uh, 26, sorry, with mask uh, 255.0.0.0. And this is, uh, this kind of uh, subnetting, as you can see, uh, has several downsides. For example, uh, First of all, classful uh, addressing uh, lead to a lot of wasted IP addresses. You cannot use, uh, you cannot um, flexible, uh, using f uh, fle uh, flexibly these um, addresses. And uh, uh, classful addresses is uh, rigid and doesn't allow uh, for subnetting between uh, different domains. Next, uh, it has uh, the uh, limited scalability, as you can see. As the internet grew, the limitation of classful addressing became uh, more and more apparent. Okay, which uh, uh, other classes, uh, uh, sub sorry, subnetics uh, we have? Here, uh, Next one is the classes, uh, classless subnetting. Uh, and as the internet uh, expanded, so the demand of the addressing uh, numerous devices uh, intensified. And the problem uh, became more comp uh, complex, you know, and uh, it needed uh, to be solved. So, uh, uh, and the classes, cl classless uh, addressing uh, uh, had been re represented. So, and a classless addressing lets you use um, various subnet masks to create a subnet that um, fit the size of each user group or device, or device group. And uh, here is the two kind of <clears throat> uh, classical subnetting. The first, the first one is the CIDR, uh, classless interdomain routing. And the second one is the uh, VLSM that uh, uh, stands for variable uh, lens subnet mask, uh, masking. And there are two uh, techniques uh, that can be used to manage uh, IP address space. And uh, they both are important uh, for efficiently uh, using IP addresses and uh, reducing the size of um, routing tables. And uh, what is the difference between uh, these uh, classless subnetting uh, techniques? 
So the first one, the cider, <clears throat> as you can see, allows you to aggre aggregate uh, of multiple IP networks into the signal uh, single net network. Uh, this is uh, done by using a subnet mask uh, that specifies the number of bits that are used for network prefix. And here is the uh, here is an uh, example. So, for example, subnet uh, mask um, 205, uh, 255.255.255.0 specifies that uh, the first 24 bits of the IP addresses are used for um, network prefix. And the remaining other um, 8 bits uh, are used for host addresses. And uh, as you can see, this means that the uh, network uh, 192.168.1.0 uh, uh, tw slash 22 can be aggregated with the network uh, 109 uh, with the network uh, uh, 192 dot 168 dot uh, 2.0 slash 24 into a single network uh, with the uh, mask 23 so we can uh, use the CIDR to aggregate uh, different routes. And <clears throat> here is the example of aggregating. In the image, you can see the example of aggregating. Uh, uh, different uh, subnets into the one subnet. It's, it's like summarization of uh, split, splitted uh, subnets into the one. Uh, so, uh, next <clears throat> uh, technique, uh, VLSM, allows uh, for creation of subnet of different sizes. So, it, it can be used to divide it one big subnet into the smallest uh, one. So, um, how it works? Uh, this is done by borrowing bits from the host portion of the IP address. For example, here you can see that um, the subnet uh, 192.168.1.0/24 can be divided into two subnets. 192.168.1/25 and uh, 192.168.1.28 uh, slash 25 by borrowing one bit from the host portion of the IP address. And this um, allows, as we can see uh, later, this allows for more efficient use of IP address space uh, as so a smaller uh, subnets can um, be created for network with fewer hosts. And uh, you can see, uh, you will see in the tasks later how to do it. So let's move on to the next slide. And here you can see that examples uh, of the classless subnet, subnet. for example, um you need five subnets uh, each one contains 30 hosts and uh, the connection between network devices routers you can see here uh, requires only two address each for example con connection from this router to this router and from this router to this router, we need just only use only two IP addresses. But with classful subnetting, this is uh, uh, too hard to implement. For example, uh, here you can see that router uh, uses the IP range from 1.96 one, uh, one uh, through 1.127. It's too 
it's it's a lot of rusting of IP addresses. And with classful subnetting, you cannot uh, flexibly um, resolve this issue, the issue of rusting subnetting so, uh, uh, IP addresses. Uh, okay, let's uh, move to the next one. Classless subnet example. <clears throat> So uh, this is uh, here this uh, the same uh, situation. You need five subnets. Each of one contain um, thirty hosts, and a connection between uh, network devices requires only uh, two addresses for each uh, end. For example, from this router uh, and. Um, from one of this router to this router, uh, we have only two. Uh, we can use only two IP, IP addresses, um, uh, one, one 1.80 and 1 1.82. And uh, the connection between uh, another two uh, uh, routers as well, we have also only um, uh, uh, two addresses. And the classless subnetting uh, uh, <clears throat> allows us to flexibly uh, use uh, IP addressing and IP address range, and um, we will not waste IP addresses. For example, in the table, you can see that um, uh, IP address, uh, the network addresses, for example, uh, 1.32 through 1.63 and we use just only um, uh, mask 27 uh, IP address mask so let's move to the next one and uh, this is one of the interesting part how we can use uh, different techniques to visualize um, subnets for example using the box method um, and here you can see that um, the entire square for the first box um, represent a signal uh, si uh, single subnet containing 256 uh, IP addresses and what does it mean so uh, we have uh, 256 uh, hosts in one subnet then we can divide um, uh, our box into the uh, two equal parts and this one um, lead us to the two subnets which uh, each of one is uh, that contains uh, 128 uh, addresses so we can um, uh, we can do the same with the um, next box and we can split the uh, uh, square into the quarters and resulting uh, this will be for uh, subnets uh, each containing 64 addresses let's uh, move on further and as you can see, using um, this um, method, we can uh, divide the square into the equal parts more and more. For example, into eight equal parts, and uh, which is resulting in the um, eight subnets into the sixteen. Uh, uh, boxes which is resulting 16 subnets and 16 hosts and so on okay this is the another uh, example so and we uh, lastly came to the uh, first task uh, and I, I will ask you uh, to try to uh, visual, visualize the subnet, subnets using the box methods uh, right now. And um, can you please uh, chat into the 
just post into the chat. Um, for example, I can give you uh, two minutes and try to uh, complete all the boxes with the um, right uh, <clears throat> Uh, with the right uh, uh, subnets into the uh, into the into this box uh, using 29 and uh, 30 um, <clears throat> mask okay just try to uh, solve this task And try to post it uh, into the uh, comment. Okay, I don't see the answers, but um, we can continue. You can do it uh, later um, by yourself. And we just move to the next task. So here you can see that um, we uh, provided uh, network topology uh, and information to construct uh, an addressing scheme schema uh, that um, uh, employs variable length subnet mask. And here you can see that um, uh, subnets are represented in the boxes. And um, you can uh, try to, to resolve this issue and try to uh, complete these boxes uh, using the, the, this topology. Uh, you can see that uh, business uh, using the uh, class C IP address and you, you just need to fill these boxes with this, uh, the correct IP addresses. This is the um, second task for you. <clears throat> and let's move to the next one task 3 and as you can see um, here you, you can also see the um, uh, network topology and uh, here you can see that um, HR requires 25 hosts, uh, marketing requires 120 hosts, and uh, DevOps uh, team requires, for example, 50 hosts. 
And what you have to do here is uh, conduct an addressing scheme that imp uh, employs VLSM. And um, here you, um, you can fill the LAN address that, it, that is used for each uh, department and use the color scheme to fill all, uh, all of these colors here in the box, in each box. And um, the business um, using the class C IP address, which is 223.25.36.0. You, can, you, uh, you have to use exact this IP address, class C IP address range to um, solve this task. <clears throat> okay let's let's move to the next one this is task four uh, here you have to fill um, the table, represented table, and with the subnet address and subnet mask. And uh, the requirements for you uh, uh, here, you as a network engineer, uh, have to set up the network for company in four locations. Um, location A has eight computers, location B has 122 computers, location C has four computers, and location D has 55 computers. And um, you need to uh, bear in mind that uh, there is a, also router and router connection between location C and location, only between location C and location B. And you need to complete the information required uh, below using the address uh, class C address 192.168.2.0 using the um, variable subnet mask uh, technique, WLSM. And this task is the last one. <clears throat> uh, here you can find the uh, useful resources. 
the beginner's guide the subnetting uh, and uh, subnetting mastery you can uh, use uh, these um, resources to improve your uh, subnetting skills in the networking and that's all thank you everyone and you if you have questions please i'm open for question don't hesitate yourself ask anything rely, uh, uh, related to our topic I don't see any questions, guys. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much that you have been with me, that you uh, participated in the our stream. Uh, and if you have any questions, please write uh, uh, here or in the comment below in the YouTube channel and uh, just uh, share your thoughts if you like or don't like this one and this this uh, workshop and if you have any questions please don't hesitate yourself thank you very much bye